Oh, I've got him. What are you playing? Hello. I'm playing an online multiplayer game from the early 90s. That doesn't look like Doom. You're right, it's not Doom. It's X-Pilot, which was made in 1991 through to 1992. Tell me some more about it. It was made by some people from Norway whose names I'm almost certainly going to butcher. Sounds interesting. Yeah, there's actually quite an interesting story behind it. X-Pilot was started by two friends in the fall of 1991, while they were undergraduate students at the University of Tromsø in Norway. Bjorn Stable and Ken Ronnie Schutten had a vision of a game similar to Thrust for the Commodore 64, however built for multiple players and run on Unix workstations via the X window system. It was originally developed for the HP 9000-720 series of computers that were available at the university. It is thought to be the first multiplayer action game made for the X window system. After a month of intense coding, X-Pilot consisted of a single process game that drew on multiple X displays. A small handshake program allowed users to join the game and all the basic game elements were there. After sorting out some graphical issues, X-Pilot was becoming playable and it started to catch on in the undergraduate lab of the university. So much so that adjustments were made to the game, preventing playing during work hours or when the lab was almost full to ensure availability of computers for work, and later adding auto key repeat to reduce wear and tear on the lab keyboards. Creativity sprang up around the game, with people in the undergraduate lab making many bug reports and suggestions. Some of these features became a staple of the game, such as shields and the spark graphical effects. The first public release was made in April 1992, Ken Ronnie had started his mandatory military service, so Bjorn made his first public release as he continued by himself. He was very quickly swamped with mail from people all over the world. Feedback came from everywhere all over the world, from students at universities to employees of NASA and Intel. People responded with comments and suggestions like before, but now people were submitting patches as well. One person, Bert Guivers, was submitting many patches and in the spring of 1993 took on the task of splitting the game into a client and server, which was perhaps one of the most important updates for making X-Pilot successful on the internet. With a real client-server architecture and a much more efficient protocol, this drastically improved playability over longer distances, although latency is still a problem at greater distances. Bert's contribution was so great, he is included in the author list. Hearing the story of how these guys developed X-Pilot reminded me of my own time in university, where I'd sit in the lab with my friends eating pizza and drinking coke all through to the wee hours of the morning, whilst we wrote code for our projects. Perhaps someday I'll show some of the projects on the channel, but until then, let's keep looking at X-Pilot. At its core, the game is fairly simple you have a ship which can fly around and shoot. However, manoeuvring your ship and shooting is complicated by the Newtonian physics model. This can make it challenging to get your projectiles to connect with what you're shooting at. There are a few different game modes to play. There's the classic combat where you essentially score by destroying other players and some objects, like fixed cannons. Then there's the race mode where you need to fly through a series of waypoints as fast as you can to try and beat other players for points. Finally, there's a team play mode where you can score by stealing or destroying the enemy team's treasure in addition to destroying them. I tried combat at first, having a go on a few internet servers that are still active. Being new at the game, I got destroyed by the robots very thoroughly. I think latency had a part to play. The nearest server had a ping of about 160 milliseconds. This is likely because of my location. Another reason I've had difficulty beating the robot players is because I've been playing using the keyboard controls. I know that it's possible to use the mouse for steering your ship, which would certainly be more accurate when it comes to shooting, but I haven't figured out how to set it up. 
Fortunately, the XPilot package includes the server software, so I've been able to run a local instance so I can play with essentially no latency. I had much better luck playing the combat mode, being able to score a few kills against the robots on a different map. You can collect power-ups which are generally additional weapons such as heat-seeking missiles, extra shots or mines. I didn't have much luck using these weapons, usually dying before even getting a chance to use them. I'm sure they'd be more useful if I wasn't so bad at the game. The team play mode looked interesting, but the game server basically put me against a full team of robot players, so it was extremely unfair. With a group of human players, it would probably be quite fun. Just I had no feasible way to test it out. I fared much better with the racing mode, which simply requires you to fly around a race course following a sequence of checkpoints. The robot players don't participate in this mode, so it's not so interesting by yourself. The way you gain points in a race is to complete three laps faster than the other players, with better race positions getting more points. You can die during the race, either by colliding with walls too fast, or being shot at by other players. If you die too often, you don't get to complete the current race, and will have to wait until the other players complete their laps before being able to race again. During my playtesting, I did notice some game servers that were set up for the racing game mode. It seemed these were being used in some capacity for some AI research, but there wasn't much information to go on. If you want to play Xpilot today, it's fairly straightforward to download the source and compile it on any Linux or BSD flavor. The only caveat I noticed is that the game doesn't connect to the meta server because it has the wrong IP coded into its interface. You can fix the code or get around it by using a front end such as Xpilot panel or telnetting directly to the meta server to find a server. Whilst I didn't find any other humans playing online, there are a number of game servers currently online where you can practice against the robots. You can run your own server if you want to play with a lower latency and have more control over the game configuration. It runs fairly well on older systems such as my Spark Station here. It certainly taxes the X server quite a bit, but having multiple processes on this machine helps it run at full speed. Slower workstations would probably struggle. On faster machines, you can turn up the graphics settings, including upgrading from the vector graphics to bitmap graphics that make it look a little nicer. Xpilot is almost certainly one of the earlier multiplayer online games. I did a little bit of research into it on the internet to see if I could find any more information about it, but I didn't find any acknowledgement that it even really existed anywhere other than the websites devoted to it. I think this might be because Xpilot was written for Unix workstations, and those weren't all that common at the time. So you would usually find those in places like universities, institutions like NASA, uh, corporations, and some people who had the World Wide Web. But they weren't all that common. Amongst that audience though, Xpilot was relatively popular. Popular enough that it had its own tournaments and cups that were played annually each, every year. That's all I have for today about Xpilot anyway. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, where's my game?